This episode of Smirking Gun Reviews is brought to you by Max Shotgun Axes and Custom Weapons Emporium. Come and pick out one of our hundreds of styles of shotgun axes. Or have Mac customize your own special weapon, like the shotgun bat or shotgun drill. Or go practical with an axe toaster, axe smartphone, or shotgun camera. Because remember, the robots and aliens are coming, so don't be left undefended by the unknown horrors lurking in the shadows and corners of the world. Max Shotgun Axes and Customized Weapons Emporium is not responsible for any accidental deaths due to you accidentally killing a friend, loved one, or enemy you thought was a robot or alien. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. How's everybody doing today? Uh, we are back with more Old Shield New Reviews, the show where we look back at all the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes that I didn't cover the first time around and keep this show alive. Uh, at this point, we've probably already done our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, season 3 retrospective on these reviews. We'll be doing uh, season 4 in April. Uh, we've got Agent Carter season 2 happening in March. Um, and we're eventually going to work through all of that. And we are ramping up for the end of season 3 here. My second favorite season of this series, episode 17 of season 3, called The Team. It's the big secret warriors coming together episode, but it's also the destruction of that team <laughs> in the same episode. And just how powerful Daisy is and what Alvea's hive is up to. Uh, all these things are brought up here in a very uh, paranoid episode that is really, really fantastic. It is, again, one of the best parts about this is because I have not seen these. I forget things. I did not see uh, the end coming until it was too late. Um, once I remembered what was happening, I was like, oh, God, I, I, all these pieces started flooding back in here. And for... A moment, I know that there's, you know, people out here who don't like Lincoln. It's fine. You can like or dislike whoever you want in the show or whatever you like or what don't like. Um, but for me, this was a really good shining, good character moment episode for Lincoln because surprisingly, for once, Lincoln's, you know, kind of telling the, you know, he's telling the truth. Um, but this episode is filled with so much paranoia and distrust uh, that fits a great spy show that you sometimes can forget all the crazy supernatural and superhero stuff that's going on and I'm going to pause this really quick sorry I forgot to turn the backlight off so the show behind me uh, was really really bright so let's get into this because what starts out again as this great team the secret warriors are coming together you know it's Something from the comics. The team is not exactly <laughs> from the comics, but we make do, and it's still fun, and it's still people with powers, and we get to see Yo-Yo, we get to see Joey return, you know? We get to see everybody kicking ass and seeing what they, it's possible when the Inhumans, you know, working with S.H.I.E.L.D. But unfortunately, that trust is short-lived, and, and things are destroyed completely from within. And that's one of the great things about this show is they always can keep you on your toes and just when you think things are so bleak nothing good can happen you usually have something surprisingly great happen and at the same time this show can crush your spirits <laughs> week to week uh, as far as how bad things can get and right now we're we're pretty much at the worst of the worst here so at the end of last episode paradise lost Malik's daughter is killed. The team is is under siege by Alveus's group. 
you know, uh, all these soldiers are coming for them. Daisy and Lincoln are rushing as fast as they can to put their secret warriors together to go save everyone. And, you know, er everybody's moved on. And, and Joey, he's one of those characters who really didn't, you know, he didn't want any of this anyway. And it's, he's kind of been reluctant. But they get him and they get Yo-Yo back, Elena. Uh, and it's all set up really well. And they go in with a plan. And even though they don't really know <laughs> when I say plan, once they get there, the plan's a little bit better. But at the beginning, there's pretty much not much there. But as far as like... The, the first mission, everything goes great. And that's where this show gets you, is things look great. They go in there. Lincoln's got control of his powers and his temper, and he's flipping people around and not killing everybody. Yo-Yo and Joey are having a blast, and it's a blast to watch them use their powers and have fun. And in subtitles, right? They These are people that don't speak English is not their first language and they chose to let them speak their language instead of just you know having them speak English I, I appreciated that I like that for the characters um, the only real on you know it I was a little confused <laughs> at the beginning because it's actually been a little while since I watched Paradise Lost so I kind of forgot where everybody was that they were at the base that Hive is at, and that Malik is there too. I forgot that everybody's, all the rotten eggs are in one place and our team, and that it was Daisy and Lincoln that were on the run trying to solve everything. So you've got Yo-Yo and Joey taking care of business, you got Daisy taking care of business, you got Lincoln taking care of business, and then you got people, you know, the team here trapped, pinned down, uh, you know, taking no prisoners. This is a, you know, kill or be killed situation. Fitz using the chlorine gas that could have made everyone blind. Uh, Max's reaction to that was priceless. <laughs> the, what? <laughs> was really, really great. Um, but they, you know, eventually everybody gets out. Everybody here is, you know, beat up, especially May here. But everybody gets out. And again, you think... Everything's fine until Hive says we have one on the inside and immediately even my brain started doing its anxiety riddled paranoia. Whoa, wait, wait. And I started trying to figure out who is on the inside. Part of me even thought for a second that it was the, the one girl who could uh, change, but I think she's either dead or somewhere else. But, um... And actually, that's not her powers at all. She can turn herself into a devil. So I don't know where I got the whole shapeshifter thing from. But the rest of the episode is a paranoia-filled romp where our regular agents, our non-inhuman agents, are like, we got to quarantine all the inhumans. And you can see right away where this is going to go. Because Joey doesn't want to be there. Yo-Yo's also on the fence. You know, she wants action and then she wants to go home. She wants to get back to her life. Lincoln and his temper and his distrust of government, you know, authorities. And, you know, if it wasn't for Daisy, would he even be there? Although he has, again, like or dislike him, he has proven now to be a part of it. He wants to be a part of it. Is it because of Daisy? Mostly. But you could say the same thing for Ward, right? Ward keeps, you know, chase was always chasing around Daisy. So Daisy's always got some guy, you know, willing to do whatever it takes to be with her. And hey, Chloe Bennett is, well, she's not hard to look at, let's face it. Um, so the rest of the team has to figure out what to do about this, right? So we've got all our regular non-powered people having to make these tough decisions and knowing how tough this is going to be. Even bringing up, these people already don't trust us. This is so tentative. The peace that we have, the, the trust that we've built, the team that she's put together and so proud of, right? All of it, we immediately have to say that we don't trust you right now because of what Malik says. And that's the other thing, and is that we have Powers Booth back here as Malik. And at first I thought, well, it's probably him. 
but it, it, he was doing such a good job here. Powers Booth, his kind of last episode here, um, really laying it out, like how betrayed he felt and all about his, the death of his daughter and how, you know, this was all to bring back this guy back and he has no concerns about human beings. He does not give a crap. And, you know, realizing that everything he did, all the sacrifices that he made, as awful as they were, like, you know, allowing his own brother to be killed, to sacrificed, um, has all blown up in his face. And, of course, it was going to. But it's the ability of the actor to sell you on this that really um, makes this uh, emotional. Because Malik's a terrible, terrible person, but Powers Booth brings it in the scenes where that feeling of, he killed her, like when Coulson's kind of, you know, throwing things in his face and, and Malik saying, you don't understand, this thing killed the thing I love. I'm telling you this story about my daughter and all the reasons I was doing this for her and it She's dead, and I've killed my brother, and now I have to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. to get this, you know, you know, thing stopped. Everything is turned on its head. But it doesn't change the fact that Malik is still a, a rotten piece of shit. So, <laughs> but again, it's the power, no pun intended, of Powers Booth, his acting here, that really sells it. But it's also a great back and forth between Clark Gregg and Powers Booth where Coulson's like laying it down for him about I carry the guilt that I allowed this thing to come back because of my revenge that I wanted after Rosalind was killed. After you guys killed her, I went full on revenge. I murdered Ward. He says it. I, after him, I murdered Ward. And that sin is what allowed this thing to come here and now all this is happening. And all we can do now, all Coulson offers Malik, is revenge. And again, it gets start to get excited again because, ooh, what can Malik tell them? But it is all for naught. Because by the time they start trying to come up with a plan, the power goes out. And while everybody has been kind of quietly monitoring the Inhumans, and you know, got Fitzsimmons trying to figure out through Lucio's body, trying to figure out if they can get a cure or a way to test to find out who's been infected, everything hits the fan. You've got a standoff. The powered people, you know, barricade themselves off while the rest of them are trying to figure out what to do about it. And all our actors here, do such a convincing job. And the writing, right? Everybody has a reason that they could be turned. And so, as an audience, you really don't know what the hell is happening or who it's going to be. Now, if you remember and you've seen these episodes before, that's fine. Again, I did not remember who it was. And I have to admit, I never suspected the person who it was, even though I got a pretty decent memory. I mean, I can pull actors' names out of my ass at the drop of a hat. But for some reason, the fact that I didn't see what's coming, coming, which leads up to, again, also the way that they direct it, right? So Daisy tells everybody, there's the secret elevator. We're going to get out and we're going to do, we're going to find out what to do on our own since this is happening. But we're not getting rid of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're just running for now until we can figure it out. Which sounds like something that Daisy would say, because it's a group, she's not just running off. But it's a trick, because Mac, we have that quick scene of Mac finding something in somebody's locker, Coulson's there waiting, and they accuse Lincoln. And I thought, I immediately went, oh, well that makes sense, of course it's Lincoln. And he, but he was so adamant about not being it. But then they raise questions that make you go, well. And so eventually everybody's quarantined. And everybody starts having their own quiet little moments, right? In the meantime, we should also mention that Malik is killed off screen and then blown up. 
<laughs> in front of Fitz and Simmons to cover up the actual car. Now with Yo-Yo's powers, you wouldn't be able to tell. And with Joey's, you could. And with Lincoln's, you probably could. But what we, what I didn't realize, after especially after the conversation that Daisy and Colson have, you know, we're gonna figure all this out. When she shows up to help Lincoln, I had to see you. And as soon as she said, we got to get out of here, I was like, oh God, it was her. It's her. It's been her. And they really did such a fine job guiding us, not just all over the place, but then focusing on Lincoln and making us really believe it was. Or possibly Joey, right? Joey didn't have, you know, everybody kept you know, wondering where he was. But it's been Daisy since they got to the base. And it just all the things that I forgot flooding back to me about what's going to happen with Daisy later on. But it to me, the strongest part of this was Lincoln. And again, I know. I know some of you are like, fuck you. <laughs> I hate Lincoln. But here's the thing. This is a great character moment because this is his time. He loves this woman. He would do anything for her. He is there for her. And he tells her, no. He stands up to it, says, this is not you. This is not why we're here. You would never do this. You would never in a million years do this. And he tells her no. I thought it was a great character moment for him. Because it wasn't just saying no. There was a lot said here. So she leaves. And on her way out, she literally brings down the house on everyone. And everyone feeling that quake. Knowing then, too late, that it was Daisy the whole time and she's now buried them while she goes off to go help Hive and it is just really 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 great to see this all coming together we've got uh, five episodes left in this season to talk about and so I'm not going to spend any more time talking about this one because it was just that great. And I want to get to uh, talking about the next one as soon as I can. So if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all the notifications. I want to thank everybody that chooses to watch these. Come on, these are so much fun to talk about. I hope that some of you watching along, are watching the show along with me a little bit uh, or at your own pace. Uh, it's also just fun to talk about this, and it gets me ready for more of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff that we do over on D's Reviews. Again, check out all the content over there on his channel. Um, because we w I probably wouldn't be doing these without, uh, if we weren't doing that as well. So don't forget to check out all our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. content over on D's Reviews. So this is Rob saying, have a great day. We'll be back with episode, was it 18? Yeah. Have a great night. Bye.